Hi, welcome back to Quinoa Paw Creations tutorial videos. And I'm in this video I'm going to show the POD stitch edging a little closer. Uh, members of the group have asked that I do it in class because they couldn't see the video that I made very well. So I decided I would just um, go ahead and do it in the class for them. I just did an edging on a piece of Pelon for them and I use size 11 seed beads with the size 0 Nymo beading thread and size 11 beading needles, John James beading needles. So here is um, the video. Alright, so you got seven to go over and come out of the front. All right, now we'll start one, skip the first one, and go through the second. And that's supposed to lay right next to the first And that's one? supposed to lay right next to the one, the first row. Okay. okay. And then you're going to skip every other one. Okay, you get to the back side. So you skip the next one. And then you'll skip the next one. And then you'll be to the left end. Over, and you got no. one, that one last bead is left over. So you want to have the one you add to lay right next to that. And when you come up, and when you come up to the front side, you want to be right there where that white one is. Where that white one is. Because you're going to use that white one to be your next row. Okay. And then. That chevron is going to go at a diagonal, so you'll have to add your be there. And now you'll just fill in those spots that were made by going every other one. Okay. To the back side. And on the back side, you'll go through that white one that was there. Go through that one. And then when you go, you're going to go through your piece from the back to the front. And when you do, you want to go slanted because you want to be about a half a beat over because you're going to start your next row there. Okay. All right. And then, so I'm so, going to put another color on there. So I'm going to skip the first one and go through that second one again. And I want that white to keep going at a slant. So I'm going to add one more there. We'll go another white on the back side. Mm -hmm. And then the next color to end that row. Where I'll go through. I'm going to come back. <laughs> and then I'll hold it really tight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when I come back to the front side, I'll be right where that bead is. All right, so my last bead is on there, and I'm going to go come right up where that bead is on the front and use that bead for the next row. So every other row, you're adding one, and then the other row, you're using that bead you added. Okay? Mm -hmm. 
and then you can see this slant that's coming and then that's going to be your chevron so i'm through that one and i'm going to use that same color because i want it to follow along that white And now I'm now the white has come to together up here. So this will be the point to that white. So there'll be no more white on there anymore. Because that white has come to a point on on the top. And I'll go through that bead. And then go to the back side, right where that bead is. Then the slant. I come up next to the purple and brown. <clears throat> So you want to be sure that you're <clears throat> keeping close to your edge of your beadwork. You want it close as you can get. And always make sure you're keeping in a straight line across the back. So that it will stay snug. Now I'm going to put my third color on there. <laughs> All right, so I got that. Use that bead. So going from the back to the front with a slant. Okay. All right. So now I got all three of my colors on there. Now I'm going to go back to my background color. Add it and go through the second bead. and put my background color on the back side. And come right up where that bead is. <laughs> All right, so we Start my black up there. Now, my third color has come to the point. So put that last one on there. And on the back side, we'll do the black and go through the black when that's there. And then come to the front. All right. Now all three of my <clears throat> colors are in there. <coughs> now you can either keep going that direction and reverse them or keep them the same. Or if you want them to go in the other direction, what you're gonna do is you're gonna <clears throat> you're gonna use that one that's there to to make it go back down. So your your black would have would go right there, but you're gonna use that and you want it. 
to come back down this way. So you're going to put another one right next to that. And use that one on top. So you've got your your third color is going to come back down the other way. When you get to the edge here, your your in your inside beads will be closer together. They'll be real close, but when you get up on top here, you're gonna kind of pull. When you pull your tension, when you hook onto the one of these beads, mm -hmm. you're gonna kind of pull it around. Okay. Okay. You won't have a big gap. You just want to make sure you're pulling. When you pull your tension, that it's coming this way. Okay. So then, and then when you get to this other side like that, then you kind of slowly let them go out a little bit again to where they're like this. But you want to keep them real tight when you're right here. Okay. All right. So now I got my three little black in there. Go through that black and I'll put that third color in there to bring that chevron down the other side. So up here, because we use that, that bead to go back down we're going to put our next color next to it, right there. Have my third color going back side and through my black one to come up front. Oops, I didn't get my slant in there. Okay. And then we finish off that chevron with that second color. And then finish up the chevron in the back. Come up right there <clears throat> where the beat is. And then use that beat for the next row. All right. So you see that chevron went down the other way? Mm -hmm. Yep, got it. If I want to go back right here at this point, if I want to go back in the other direction, my black one, my black bead, I'm using my black bead now because that's where I'm at. I'm going to start with black so that the black starts going that way to start my colors to go back that way so that I will have two black right there. Then that will make it so it'll go in the other direction. Now I use that, put that black there. Now I'm to, to the front. So I'll start my next color to go back up the other way. All right, so <clears throat> now my chevrons are going back up the other way. My, Here's my double chevron. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to get this. I might even get this to go around the corner. How about that? 
All right. I was going to give up, but then I saw that corner wasn't too far away. So, so I'm going to make sure that I'm keeping my things real close together. Keep my rows real close on the inside. Okay, I want to get up here to the top. All right, see, I want to make sure I show that I'm keeping my beads inside real close together. But see, now that'll just pull right around the corner. See, so that just pulls around. And I can start going straight the other way. All right, so look at that one right around that corner. All right, that was our session with our beading circle group on Facebook for our live Zoom session for the peyote stitch edging. I hope that this video was um, entertaining for you or you, and that you learned something and appreciate you watching it. Please like and share and subscribe to my channel to support me. You can come by and um ask to be a member of our creation corner beating circle that's where i do my live zoom sessions on sundays please be sure to answer all three questions or so that i can accept your invite or you can stop by and see my um, website at www.quinoapawcreations.com and sign up for my uh, monthly newsletter that i try to give um extra um things to them or you can be a member and buy me a coffee and help support me so that I can continue to provide this information at no charge and I would appreciate your support so I'll see you next time thanks for stopping by